The Ark Encounter, Genesis 6, 5 to 9, 17. Many people today question the reality of the biblical account of Noah and the Ark. In this lesson, we are going to visit a replica of Noah's Ark called the Ark Encounter in Williamstown, Kentucky. This virtual tour will help us to better understand how Noah must have lived in the largest houseboat ever. Have you ever gone aboard a houseboat? A houseboat is a boat that has been designed or modified to be used primarily as a home. Some houseboats are like rafts that float. These boats are usually moored or tied to a dock with a rope to provide utilities like electricity and clean water. However, many houseboats have motors and they can move on their own power. In the United States and Canada, houseboats tend to be owned privately and used only for recreation. Families sometimes rent houseboats for their vacations. But in Europe, people dwell in houseboats all year round. Here is a houseboat in Amsterdam, Holland. The house is a riverboat that goes up and down the city canals all year long. The canals are like streets in the city. This is a riverboat in Bangladesh. These people not only live in this houseboat, but use it for their work of fishing and carrying cargo up and down the river. In this lesson, we are going to learn about the largest houseboat ever built, Noah's Ark. To help us understand what Noah's life was like on this boat, we are going to visit a replica of Noah's Ark called the Ark Encounter. The biblical account of Noah's Ark is found in Genesis 6-9. Genesis is the first book in the Bible and is called the Book of Beginnings because it tells how God created the world. Genesis is also part of the books of law. The books of law are the first five books in the Old Testament. Let's say the first five books in the Old Testament. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Noah was a man who did what was right and obeyed God. He had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. However, everyone else was disobeying God. People were treating each other very badly. They fought with one another. God saw that the people he had created had become very wicked and violent. They killed and stole from one another. God told Noah that he was going to put an end to this wickedness by sending a flood to cover the earth. But Noah and his family would be spared. God said that he was going to establish a covenant or promise with Noah. Noah was given instructions to build a big ark out of gopher or cypress wood. It was to be covered inside and out with pitch. The ark was to be 450 feet long and 75 feet wide and 45 feet high. It would have three decks divided into rooms and a roof with a gap or window underneath for air to get in. It would have one door on the side. 
At once, Noah and his sons obeyed God and started to build the huge box-shaped boat. It was a massive project that required cutting down huge trees and cutting them into long planks by hand. Perhaps it took them as long as 75 years to build. The wicked people around wondered what Noah and his sons were doing. Genesis 7 tells us that when the ark was ready, God told Noah the flood would be coming in seven days' time. Noah, his three sons, and their wives were told to take their possessions aboard the boat. They stored food for the animals coming aboard, too. Genesis 7 also tells us that God made seven pairs of each clean animal and bird, one male and the other female, to come to Noah, and all these animals were put into the ark. Two of every unclean animal were also taken on board. Unclean animals were those like lizards, moles, pigs, owls, mice, ferrets, and ravens. What an amazing sight that must have been. God causing all the right animals to migrate to the ark. After everyone was in the ark, God waited seven more days before closing the door of the ark. Then the rain began to fall. For 40 days and 40 nights, it rained heavily. Rivers burst from their banks and floodwaters got higher and higher. Water not only came from the heavens, but the springs of the great deep burst forth. Water came up from the ground in huge gushes. As the waters rose, the ark began to float. The flood waters raised the ark high above the earth. The waters kept rising until they covered all the high mountains of the earth to a depth of more than 20 feet. The entire earth was covered with water. Every living creature on land outside the ark was wiped out. Every man, woman, child, animal, and bird of the air was destroyed. Only Noah and his family on the ark were left alive. The water flooded the earth for 150 days, but those aboard the ark were safe. Genesis 8 tells us that God sent a wind over the earth and the floodwaters receded. The springs in the earth and the rain from heaven were stopped. As the flood water went down, the mountains became visible, and the ark came to rest on the mountains of Ararat. After 40 days of sitting on the mountain, Noah sent out a raven, but it found nowhere to land. Then he sent out a dove. It flew around looking for land. but it could find nowhere to perch and return to the ark. Noah reached out his hand and brought it back into the ark. Noah waited seven more days and again sent out the dove from the ark. Later that evening, it returned with a freshly plucked leaf. Noah knew that the water was receding. A week later, he sent out the dove a third time, but it did not return. Noah knew that the dove had found land. 
Noah removed the roof of the ark and saw that the land was drying out. Two months later, the land was dry enough for Noah, his family, and the animals to leave the ark. God said to Noah, Come out of the ark, you and your wife and your sons and your wives. Bring out every kind of living creature that is with you. After leaving the ark, Noah built an altar to the Lord and made sacrifices to God. He took some of the clean animals and clean birds and sacrificed burnt offerings with it. God was pleased with the offering and promised never again to destroy all living creatures with a flood. As long as the earth endures, sea time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night will never cease. God put a rainbow in the sky. God then told Noah, this rainbow is the sign of my promise, never to flood the whole earth again. God provided for Noah and his family during the flood. And it was a picture of how Christ would die on the cross for our sins. Just as Noah had believed in God, he was saved from the great flood. God punished sin, but he saved the righteous by grace. Jesus Christ made the ultimate sacrifice of his life on the cross and bore our judgment for sin. Christ has provided a way for all who believe in him to be saved from eternal death. Of all Bible records, the account of the great flood is one that is often disputed. People make fun and scoff at others who believe this Bible story. 2 Peter 3, 5 and 6 says that people will forget that God created the earth and once judged the earth with water. To help remember and understand this event, a group of people from Answers in Genesis, led by a man named Ken Ham, decided to build a full-scale model of Noah's Ark as it is described in the Bible. This structure is the largest wooden timber frame structure in the world and is in a theme park in Williamstown, Kentucky, called the Ark Encounter. In 2016, when this theme park opened, my husband and I went to visit it. Using pictures that we took and some video, we can see just how big the Ark was and get a good idea of how it might have been constructed. The first look at the Ark is very impressive. It is a very large building. The Ark sits on the top of a large hill near Interstate 75. I must admit that I did not realize just how big of a building God told Noah to build. God said that the ark should be 300 cubits long, 50 cubits wide, and 30 cubits high. A cubit is an ancient measure of length based on the distance from the elbow to the fingertips. In modern measurements, the ark is 500 feet long and 85 feet wide. This means the ark is approximately one and a half NFL football fields long and about half as wide. It is about seven stories in height. 
it is very interesting that the arc was exactly six times longer than it was wide. That is the same ratio that is used by modern shipbuilders. This ratio would have made the vessel the most seaworthy possible in a storm. God knew exactly what Noah and the animals would need to be safe. The bow, or the front of the ark, is 104 feet in the air, which is about 10 stories tall. This would have allowed the ark to survive very large waves as the ship rocked from side to side. When you arrive at the top of the mountain, you are escorted to the main entrance. A long ramp leads up the side of the ark, probably much like the one Noah would have had to build for the animals to be able to easily enter the ship. Inside the ark, you will see about 3.3 million board feet of timber that was used in its construction. Lots of wood and trees were needed for this project. Just as God had instructed, there are three levels or decks in the ark. The center of the ark has a series of ramps leading from one level to another. The lower deck level contains the food storage area. The walls of the huge room are lined with jugs of water and barrels or sacks of food stacked for easy access. Remember, God told Noah to bring aboard food to feed not only the animals, but his family also. It would take a lot of food to feed everyone for a year and 10 days. On this level, as well as the second level, there are many cages for the animals. Most of the animals were much smaller than a sheep, so there were rows and rows of smaller cages. Some were stacked one on top of the other. Each cage was equipped with a feeding trough and a watering system. While the Bible does not tell us exactly how God provided for the animals, some researchers have theorized how a watering system could be constructed to catch the rainwater and distribute it throughout the ark using troughs. Noah must have been a very smart man to build such a vessel that would provide for the needs of all the animals. Larger cages for bigger animals were on the second level and third level. Having the larger animals on the upper levels would have provided stability for the vessel as it floated on the raging flood. The Bible says that God told Noah to take on the ark two of every kind of animal and seven pairs of the clean animals and flying creatures. The Bible states that Noah's cargo was limited to land-dwelling animals, in which was the breath of life, Genesis 7:15. So this clearly excludes fish and other sea creatures, and it probably excludes the insects and other invertebrates. This means that there were probably about 16,000 animals aboard the ship. Since the animals could have been young and very small in size and probably only weighed a few hundred pounds, it would not have required as much floor space as larger animals. Estimates indicate that really only 47% of the ark floor would have been necessary to house the animals. So there was lots of space on board the ark. 
even for the dinosaurs. There are only several hundred kinds of dinosaurs known to man, and more than half are smaller than a sheep. The dinosaurs could have eaten basically the same foods as the other animals. The animals probably ate dried plant materials or dried meat. Some Bible scholars believe that God may have caused the animals to go into hibernation while they were on the ark, which would have greatly relieved the need for food, water, and care for the waste of the ark animals. Now, whether or not God supernaturally made the animals to go to sleep or not, it really wasn't necessary for them to be cared for on the ark. But it would have made the task a lot easier. Many people have wondered or questioned the accuracy of the Bible story of the Great Flood because they do not see how Noah could have gathered all the animals together. They say it would have taken years to collect all these species, making sure there were male and female of each kind. But remember, Noah did not have to go get the animals. The animals came to him. God took care of all the details when Noah obeyed. Riding on the ship during a violent storm must have been very frightening. I am sure that Noah and his family prayed to God often, thanking him for providing the ship and seeking his continued protection as the storm raged. The area of the ship where Noah and his family lived was quite large. There was plenty of room for tools and supplies that would be needed to rebuild homes once they left the ark. Noah was no doubt a very educated man and probably kept careful records about the animals as well as the books telling the lineage of families as recorded in the first part of Genesis. Areas for each of Noah's sons and their wives were also very spacious. Ham, Shem, and Japheth and their wives would have plenty of room in which to live and work. Near the center of the ark was a replica of Noah sending the raven and dove out of the ark to check the level of the receding waters. Although Noah was curious as to how, how dry the land was, he did not get out of the ark until God told him. He waited on God's timing. God knew when the ground was dry enough for Noah and his family. Since Noah and his family were on the ark for over a year, they probably went about the normal duties of weaving cloth for new clothes. They may have had a vegetable and herb garden for fresh vegetables. Cooking and food preparation for the family would still need to happen. This is what the kitchen might have looked like. And of course, the entrance to the ark, the door that God shut, was huge. Wide enough for all to enter who believed in him. The Ark Encounter was a great place to visit. We enjoyed our time there and learned a lot more about Noah. Our memory verse is Genesis 9, 16. Whenever the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and all living creatures of every kind on the earth. Throughout the Bible, we see where God shows his love and patience toward people in order to save them. 
He wants us to love and serve him in return. Let's say our verse again. Genesis 9, 16. Whenever the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and all living creatures of every kind on the earth. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we know there are many people today who do not believe what you say in your word. They laugh and scoff at the story of Noah and the ark. Help us to love you and to believe what you say. As we talk to others, help us to tell them about your love and your desire to see everyone come to you for salvation. Just as you saved Noah and his family from the great flood, you want to save us from eternal death. Thank you for loving and saving us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Remember, God always keeps his promises. The ark had landed on the mountains of Iraq. Noah didn't want to leave the ark. He heard the thunder crack. It's danger, 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 God said, get out that door. I promise with this rainbow that I'll flood the earth no more. 